So welcome, all of you. Uh, tonight, I'm going to talk a little bit about NFS Rods, a piece of software that we've been working on that is not yet released, but imminent. Uh, I'm Carol. I work here. We work on iRods. I've only got a few slides, and then I'm going to do a, a demo. <coughs> Just starting off with a solid uh, what, why, and how. So NFS Rods is, first of all, an iRods client. It is, uh, it's not a plugin. It's, uh, it's not part of the server. It, it speaks the iRods protocol from the outside. So it's speaking to iRods um, from outside our little green box. Uh, it is open source. Uh, it's visible. You can go look at it. It presents iRods as uh, NFS uh, version 4.1. Uh, this is a big deal because there were some major changes in version 4. And uh, we were not really interested in this until it became uh, version 4. What this means is that you can actually mount, uh, with standard mount command, a mount point that will then allow you to look into an IROD zone with all of the policy and goodness that that, that affords. Uh, this is interesting because it does present a standard POSIX file system interface. Uh, to any uh, legacy tools, instruments, uh, scripts, basically anything that's ever been able to write a file down uh, can now just do what they're all, they've always been able to do. Um, but again, you get all that policy on the back end uh, because you're coming through the IROD's uh, authentication layer and you're hitting all the policy enforcement points and you've got auditing and things turned on, um, that will still be in effect. So the equivalent of an I put and an I get just by copying files, opening files, writing files. So this is working um, uh, by wrapping effectively or providing a virtual file system implementation to the NFS for J server. So NFS for J is a Java, pure Java uh, uh, application that uh, is an NFS server, and it's the one that provides that 4.1 interface. And so on, this piece of software is speaking NFS on one side and speaking IRODs on the other side. And it's doing a live translation between the POSIX interface over here and the IRODs protocol over here. <coughs> we deploy this as a Docker container. So that means that uh, it's, it's pretty easy and pretty flexible in order to get this up and running uh, to play with it, uh, which is part of the design goal. <laughs> Any questions so far? Yes. It's presenting the iRods logical file system. Here. That is correct. Yeah, we're presenting the iRods logical namespace as a mount point. point. Yes. And you can present uh, not just the root of the zone, but you can actually dig down and only present a certain collection. So if you wanted to only make a certain collection available via a mount point, Uh, deploy this one Docker container with this one particular configuration so that this one three level deep collection was available to anyone on that authenticated machine. So that's how it works. So with that comes some caveats because there's a whole lot that I just waved out of, you know, kind of waved along here. So the assumptions for this piece of software that's sitting here in the middle at the bottom, again, it's speaking IRODs out of one side of its mouth. It's speaking NFS as a server out of the other side. The assumptions are that whoever shows up and comes into that mount point, whoever traverses the mount point, is an authenticated Unix user, right? Whoever's on that box and goes into that mount point has gone through some authentication you know, method of some kind. The idea is that that's going to be done in an enterprise way. So there's some magic cloud here at the top that's doing Active Directory, that's doing LDAP, that's doing something, right? So they don't have access into that VM or into that uh, authentication, authenticated space until they authenticate the grown-up way, whatever that looks like, right? Because what happens is that the UID on that machine, whoever they resolve to at an enterprise level, is what gets communicated to NFS. NFS doesn't see that their name is Alice. It sees that their UID is 7,512, right? That's important because the ID that NFS rods is able to dereference has to come from that number and turn it into a name, which means that the 
Etsy password and Etsy shadow file on the machine running NFS rods has to line up and match with who came in the front door, right? So on the first error here on the left, NFS, it's actually a UID that comes across the wire as authentication, right? NFS rod dereferences that and turns it into the string Alice and then uses the string, the name of the user, when it's speaking the IROTS protocol into the IROTS server on the other half of the side, right? And Alice, the string, has to be a user in the IROTS namespace. Again, that could be handled through the magic cloud, it could be derived, um, but the point is that that has to be consistent uh, across all three. Any questions? Does that make sense? The tricky part about this, the caveat, is that if you present a mount point to someone where they have sudo access, where they have root, they can become anybody they want. And when they traverse through the looking glass, right, they go through the mount point, IROTS doesn't know that they're actually the root user. They're coming in as whoever they authenticated as, in this case, whoever they say they are. And then they'll have all of the policy and all the access and all the rights they're in, in IROTS land, because they're coming to the full policy engine as the user that they authenticated as. So if you are the administrator, you only want to deploy this into boxes where someone who can log into it also doesn't have root. Right? So I've got a demo, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about how to set it up. And then uh, we'll type some things. So this is a single box. I have collapsed this model here into one machine for purposes of demo. Uh, the VM is the machine running NFS rods, he is also running the IROD server software, right? So I actually don't have to do any of the syncing of user IDs and everything across machines because there's only one machine. So as soon as I switch user on the VM, then I'm also actually um, the same Etsy password and Etsy host, uh, sorry, Etsy password and Etsy shadow file that are in the VM are the same files that are actually being seen by NFS runs. So it's, it's dereferencing in the same source of truth. So I don't have the problem of having sync for this demo. Uh, and then of course, I run server, I had to go and add uh, down here at the bottom of this screen. I added, I added Alice and Bobby both as Unix accounts and as IRODS accounts. So this single instance is running Docker to run on NFS rods. It's running iRods itself on the machine as a package. Uh, in it are two plugins, and we'll talk about those in a second. And then I've also got a Docker container that we built originally for um, UGM 2018 that's actually running uh, Rabbit, Logstash, Elasticsearch, and Kibana all in the same Docker container. And again, for demo purposes, this means that we're going to be able to do some stuff through the mount point and then see the effects in a dashboard in real time. So this was the setup for the actual machine. Oh, the two plugins. So one of the things that NFS rods uh, afforded us to discover, uh, we found a bug, arguably a bug. Um, IRODS wasn't updating the end time of collections, of the parent collection when an, when an object inside of it changed. In part because that's another database round trip and we try to avoid those at all possible and we were, we were avoiding it. The problem is that NFS for J totally expected those end times to match and, and be true. Otherwise it was thrashing as it tried to keep its cache up to date. So we had to write a plugin for the server that on certain events would actually update the end time correctly in the catalog adding another database hit, but that was the cost of doing it correctly. Uh, and so that's actually available and we're gonna release that imminently alongside the release of NFS rods so that it's available for the server. If you're running NFS rods on, uh, like I said, the, uh, the machine in the middle, the end time plugin has to be on the IROD server. So we can't just declare a dependency between NFS rods and this plugin because they're potentially running on different computers. Um, yeah, distributed system, right? So 
Uh, that's a plugin that will exist imminently and be released alongside everything else, and it will be versioned accordingly with the server because it needs to match with the server. And then we're running the audit uh, rule engine plugin on this box as well, so that it's sending out AMQP messages being picked up by the uh, RabbitMQ. Blog stash is pulling them out, putting them into Elasticsearch, and then Kibana is the dashboard for us to be able to see that happen. So hopefully, live demos is how it works. So the configuration of uh, NFS rods is pretty fair. It's not very complicated. Um, if you come up with other use cases and things that we haven't considered here, please let us know. This is so far unreleased. Uh, basically, you have to declare on the NFS server side what port you'd like this to be out. 2049 is the standard NFS port, but you can change that if you want to. Uh, the IROD's mount point is slash temp zone. This is the point at which it's being uh, exported, so to speak, right? So if we wanted to go three levels down, we could have temp zone uh, projects, uh, you know, space exploration, and then we would share that and only mount it in a VM where astronauts could look at it, right? And they would never be able to go traverse up the tree because they're being exported a, a collection down below. In this case, we're going to mount the entire the entire zone. So you'll see the root of the zone when you enter through the mount. Uh, we have uh, some refresh times here. So uh, when you run an NFS server, you have to uh, walk the line between being really performant and uh, let's see what the alternate uh, being really true. Yeah, that's it. Because you are presenting uh, an interface into some some data that's somewhere else. So if you cache things, it makes things really quick for the user, but it's potentially out of date, right? So we keep file information for a couple seconds, and then it's flushed out. And that's because the server is constantly asking itself about stat information and time and all that kind of stuff. So we keep it for a couple seconds, and it's gone. And then user information we keep for a whole minute because people don't touch that as often. Um, again, those are to taste. That's the default 60 and 2, but we can lower those or raise those. And you know, now you've got the ability to uh, control that knob a little bit. The IROD server side, so NFS is how it's facing out, and then IROD uh, server co uh, configs are how it's speaking to um, IROD itself, right? So uh, arguably we should change that to be IROD's client. I'm not sure. I kind of feel strongly both ways. Um, but it's got the zone, the host, the port, and the resource. It is logging in to IROD's as an admin account. That's another reason that this is a uh, a security concern or at least a, a thing that should remain in your mind. Um, this runs as an administrator because it has to be able to uh, do its job. Yes, sir. Um, so you can specify the zone name there. Uh, is that, does that work with a federated environment? Uh, if, yes, presumably it will uh, because you are logging into, uh, that's a good question. If I just put a slash uh, on line five of this set of configs here. Um, presumably it would see both zones if the user who walks through that door, that mirror, um, has permission to see that other zone. Okay. So once you go through the mount point, you are, you know, you are presented with the things that your user would be able to see if you had done an ILS or an ICD or things like that. I don't know that we've actually tested a federated zone, but I, I believe the security model will allow that. Cool. Corey will have to test that. <laughs> All right. So the next little bit. Um, so to launch the NFS uh, rods Docker container, uh, that's it. There's one line. Uh, you give it a name. You give it a port for the outside that you would like to be able to um, push into the server on 2049. If we had not launched it on 2049 in the config, we could have tweaked it out here and changed it around. But at that point, you're just passing and wiring up uh, ports to each other. Uh, you have to give it a volume mount for where the configuration goes. And the config, again, was this thing, right? It's giving that server.json. There's actually two other files that I think NFS for J requires, but we don't touch those. So there's actually three files that have to go in that directory. So we map the uh, my NFS rods config to a place in the Docker container that we have hard coded for the software to look for. So it's looking at NFS rods ext. 
Uh, we're mounting it as read only, so the Docker container is not allowed to change any of this stuff in case it goes haywire or gets a brain or has an opinion. Uh, it's, it's mounted as read only. And then we also have to obviously pass the, uh, the Etsy password and Etsy shadow files from the machine running in FS rods. Again, read only so that the, uh, so the server can do its job and be referenced as users. And then you give it a name, or you give it a, 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 an image to, to launch. In this case, I ran it because it's unreleased. Uh, I ran it in a built environment, so it's just a locally named uh, NFS rods. Uh, eventually, that would be irod slash NFS rods, and it would be in the irods namespace at uh, Docker Hub, and you'd be able to run this without building it yourself. Uh, step three is to create a mount point. Uh, so again, this is on all on the same machine, but if you were doing this in the grown-up way, you'd be on a machine that's not where uh, not where you ran NFS rod, but rather in that VM environment. And so a, sudo, a root user or a sudo user would be able to make a directory for the mount point and then mount, right? And so the mount command, you get to pick the port. Um, you pick the host name of the machine that you're on. Uh, no, no, sorry. This, it would be the host name of the machine uh, that was providing port 3000. I used backtake host name because it's all the same machine. So again, you caught me in the demo here. Uh, and then you give it the mount point on the local machine on port to expose this, uh, this connection. Any questions about that so far? All right, so then as an authenticated user on that VM, you could go into the mount point. If I had stopped here and not gone all the way into home Bobby, then I would have just seen the home directory, which is the same thing that you see at the root of the IRS uh, with an ILS. Uh, I put a file into, I put some stuff into a file and I listed the file and then I showed the file and yeah, look, it's, it's just like a file system. Worst demo ever, right? We did it. So now I'm actually going to do it. I think the only last slide is thank you. So yeah, we're going to, now we're going to actually present it to it. So if I come back, so on the left, uh, I am the, uh, so again, this is an EC2 instance at, uh, at Amazon. I am currently logged in. There's nothing in here. I built the mtime plugin and I built the NFS rods itself. So in here, uh, this is what the repo looks like. And so if I switch to being, so I've already run, so the Docker container is running here. If I show you that, let's see. Yes, so the two things that are running on this machine, one is the NFS rods and one is the, uh, the audit elk stack thing that we had for the demo from last year. Uh, let's see. Um, so the top one is the one that's been running it's five hours, right? It's great. So we're going to switch to being uh, Bobby. Bobby's just, just another user. I made him uh, a little bit ago. If we want to, we could go look at um, so down here at the bottom, uh, you can see Alice and Bobby I made them uh, a couple days ago as I prepared for this. Uh, it doesn't really matter what their numbers are in this case, but in an uh, enterprise environment, this would you know this would have to be synced. These two lines in this file would have to be on all the machines that they care about this. Uh, same thing with um, uh, SE Shadow. Um, Alice and Bobby are here too. Uh, just for the way that NFS rods is looking up and resolving its users. So I go back to being Bobby again. Uh, and then I go into, so I just have completed, it's already there. I had already run the mount command, uh, like I showed in the, uh, uh, in the slides. Too big. So there's home, there's public, there's Bobby. Notice there's no Alice. If we were to log in as Alice, Alice would show up because Alice has permission to see Alice's stuff, Bobby has permission to see Bobby's stuff. So there's our 
our one our one file. And so this is very exciting. Uh, this is interesting because over here in the other window, um, so this is just the IROD's uh, account um, on the same machine. And if I do an ILS, I'm in that account. If I do an ILS um, of Bobby's directory, we can see that there is, this is the file in IRODS, and then it's being presented the same way uh, through the NFS RODS mount point. Um, if I was to, uh, let's see, touch a, So we're going to put a file here. Oh, I can't do that because I'm IROTS. Never mind. We're going to see it on the other side. So if I do this, just to make sure it's not there. So I'm sitting in Bobby's account. I am Bobby. I'm going to echo something into a file. Just to show you that it's there, it's presented in the mount point. And if I do an ILS Bobby again, it's, it's in IROGS as well. It happens to have exactly eight characters also. Great, wonderful. Um, so I've also got um, this little script over here. So on the right, we're just going to run a watch command. Every two seconds, it's going to update what's in Bobby's account in IRODS via ILS. And over here, we're going to run this mess of things, which is basically going to just touch a couple files, sleep for a little bit, touch another file, um, and then echo them out. So we should start to see um, the content of the file as they show up. So I think right now we're hitting that two second window, uh, which is interesting. Um, you see how the, the the newest file on this, oh, there it goes, hello four. See how it got synced? So sometimes we're hitting that threshold of the, the files being slightly out of order or out of date. I think if I were to change the sleep to like a couple seconds, then it would always be good. I'm gonna try it. So I'm gonna sleep for, two seconds after I touch something and it should time out and then we should be able to see uh, current and see how there were zeros to the zeros on the last one at all times. But now I think we're going to start seeing, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be refreshed every time because leaving it at two seconds was a little too long for a script that only slept one second. The files that were in the NFS cache were now out of date because they had been uh, they have been updated on the server. But over here, it's actually correct in IROS. It's just that the NFS presentation was a second out of date, uh, and I was displaying it just before it was time. Um, and because I'm concatenating, uh, that's why you're starting to see it twice, because the first, the first uh, I went through six the first time. Now you'll only see hello seven once, uh, and it's only going to be nine characters uh, because we didn't already get through six the last time. Uh, the other thing to show you, so while that's going, um, this is the Kibana dashboard that has been monitoring what I've been doing. So I've got uh, bytes read per minute, I've got bytes written per minute, and because I'm reading and writing into the system, this is getting live. It's coming from the IP, in this case it's calling from inside the house because there's only one computer involved. Uh, you would have different colored bars here for different colored uh, users, different IPs. Uh, connections per minute. Um, Rods and Bobby are both talking to things. I think this this slow burn here is the Rods user uh, waking up the delay server every 30 seconds and just kind of pinging the system. So that's that's happening. And so if I were to come back over here and do some more on the other side. I could do an ILS, just run ILS a whole bunch of times. 
and I expect that you'll start to see the, yeah, I'm starting to catch up a little bit because it's, it's updating every five seconds. Uh, and uh, it's updating every five seconds and it's only showing the last 15 minutes. If I show, um, you know, the last day, let's see, today, you can see when I was testing at about two o'clock. <laughs> um, but again, this is just, at this point, it's just, um, it's, it's just Gabbana doing his job. So this is a dashboard that we had already kind of cobbled together about a year and a half ago, two years ago. I copy pasted it, dropped it in here to be able to show that we're getting live updates uh, all the way through the system. So if we had multiple users hitting this mount point and they were authenticated separately and differently. Uh, so let, actually, if I come over here and become Alice, we should see a new user. Uh, so there's home and there's Alice, right? And so there's nothing in here. Oh, there's a couple files. So more files. And over here, we should see Alice pop up in the bottom left hand corner as a new user uh, because it's her first activity. She's on, she's on the board. But the IPs and everything will still match. It's just a new user. And then unique users per minute. Uh, I don't know if that's going to change down here. It might it might jump to three if we have uh, Rods and Bobby and Alice touching something in the next minute. But uh, that's that's effectively the demo. Any any questions? Did it in twenty eight minutes. Uh, this so this version. Um, was originally written last summer uh, by Alec. He was uh, our intern last summer. And then he left and it wasn't quite done. We also had some Kerberos mixed in, so we ripped all that out as we figured out what the security model actually should look like. And so Corey did the, the bulk of the work to get it running uh, after Alec was gone. Uh, and Mike uh, has helped, and then Jason and I kind of stood around and, and had opinions, uh, didn't do any real work. Uh, this, itself was inspired by NFS Rod's the previous, the prior, which was written by uh, some students in Brazil under the, uh, under the guidance of Stephen Wirth um, at EMC, when he was still at EMC. Uh, this was now, gosh, almost three years ago. So the work was at least three years ago, three and a half years ago. Uh, it was an NFS version of three piece of software, which uh, was, an, was an interesting exercise, but not, uh, not deployable really anywhere. Uh, people needed the, the V4 feature set. Uh, so we will be talking about this more. Uh, we will write more of this down uh, for UGM in, U, uh, in Utrecht next month. And so the next time we make a slide like this, we'll have our own little links for slides in the paper. Um, and these slides are available. They'll be online at slides.com uh, slash irods. And I think that's all I have to say. About Any other questions? Might be done. Yeah. Could you describe a little bit more about the specific use cases where this has come in handy? Uh, well, so V3 didn't have, um, I think it didn't have the ability to, uh, I think the security model was a little different. I think the, uh, they had some assumptions about where it could run and who had access to it. Uh, there was something about concurrent usage that I think wasn't quite as fully baked. Um, and so V4 was a major. Uh, protocol step for the NFS world. This particular implementation is the pure job implementation, which is what we jumped on. Had there been a different implementation that we liked better, we would have used it, but this is what we had. But, but what about in general? And maybe I'm asking, like, what was the major use case with uh, uh, the folks in Brazil on, on, on that? Oh, I think, I think it's, it's generally people would love to not have to write new software. So if they can get the, get the benefits of what IROTS provides, with all of the policy implications and that kind of stuff, without having to touch any of their other stack, that's it. Just removes other software from, yeah. from, from the piece. Um, we've had lots of interest uh, when people say, "Well, how do I get this on Windows? How do I get this on?" Uh, and so 
NFS is a way to do that. Even, you know, we're, we're looking at taking the learnings from this piece of software and we're going to wrap something. We don't know, know what yet, but we're going to wrap something and, and make a SIFS rods. So the, for the Samba world, uh, so the instruments and the microscopes and the telescopes and stuff can, can write directly to just a directory and get more performance than through uh, like a web dev or something else. I mean, we can already present as directories on Mac and Windows, um, but large file transfers are tricky, uh, concurrency is tricky. Uh, this, this answers a lot of that. Thanks. Yeah. All right. We did it. Thank you so much. Yay. Thank you.